Hi everyone, this is Ankur from FinStudy Club, welcoming all viewers to the session on the intercorporate investments where in we are going to talk about you know the overview you know and uh, we are going to lay down the context in which the forthcoming sessions are going to come up so uh, you already know actually what is an intercorporate investment because you have done that in level 1 you know to some extent wherein we have talked about the marketable securities so just a quick recap when company 1 rather than putting his money into his own business and puts that money into some other company either in form of equity or debt or preference in whatever way so one corporate is putting investment into the other that's called as intercorporate well the question is I mean why is not company one interested to put his money into his own business I mean that's the organic way uh, you know which was has been the traditional way of doing business but not today I mean there are a lot of emerging trends that you see the business has become much more complex the product life is very very short the growth is I mean, the, I mean not only we are saying that the growth is very high we're also saying that the speed of growth and the the speed of change is extremely extremely high and the third is you know it's pretty commonsensical that every business would today like to diversify itself uh, and you know by by investing into more than one product more than one geographies more than you know one uh, customer segment so on and so forth so knowing all that what is the takeaway for an analyst I mean when let's say if I'm buying the stake for company one I'm buying some shares in company one now earlier while I used to buy the shares of company one my focus was only on the business of company one because my money indirectly would be you know invested into the business of company one only but today it's quite possible that the company one while investing into company two starts getting the exposure from the business of company two as well so indirectly I am also getting the exposure to the business of company two because ultimately company one is nothing but a group of shareholders and I am one of those so a couple of you know important points for an analyst in this context of intercorporate the first is whether to invest in the groups holding company I mean maybe for example Vodafone UK as like a parent company or to invest in any of the subsidiary maybe let's say Vodafone Brazil what I'm basically trying to say here is that if I have the money as an investor I want to invest into someone's equity I have a choice I can either invest at a parent level who will ultimately take my money into Brazil so that will actually for me will become an indirect investment the other option that I have is to directly invest into Vodafone Brazil so that's gonna be my direct investor so that's you know one of the decision point that is available today for an analyst you know or let's say an equity research person the second important aspect is what would be the impact if the company is in which you are making the investment actually siphons off maybe siphoning off is, is, is a negative word but you know transfers your money by investing into some other corporate so how would what is the take home for you I mean how much would you actually gain some money would you lose some money so what are the financial implications of that so, so that's the second point you know which is pretty obviously connected to the first and the third is, is more from a review and analysis standpoint it is how would the standalone results be different than the consolidated ones you know I'm going to talk about these two terms you know in much more detail in my forthcoming sessions uh, and you know on the next slide as well so what I'm doing on this slide looks to be a pretty busy slide what I'm doing is I'm just bifurcating all types of intercorporate investments into four watertight buckets okay now these watertight buckets are not to be seen as far as the percentages are concerned although I have mentioned the percentages also but that's not the main important aspect here so I'm going to put a cross here and I'm going to put a tick here and this is where we're going to follow the principle of substance over form so I'm going to write here substance and I'm going to write here legal form let me let me let me explain you know what does this one two three four mean now there are four scenarios in which you know a particular case can fall into so C1 in this case become investor and C2 in this case becomes investee now the first case is obviously you know the case which is by volume the maximum number of times you know, happening and that is that 
by making this investment investor gets no influence over investee now the reason could be maybe the percentage ownership that he gets is fairly less or it could be any other reason so we are not getting into the reason part of it but all we are saying is as an outcome there is no control no influence that the investor gets that's the first level in which case we are going to call the investments done by c1 in the shares of let's say or in the debentures or the preference shares of c2 as a financial asset we'll, we'll we'll term it with other names also like passive investments and you know all that stuff marketable securities but overall it's like a it will be treated like a financial asset so here there is absolutely no influence the all the three cases that you see on the right hand side of this there is some bit of influence which is coming up and you let's just look at different degrees of it the second level that we're talking about here is c1 has been able to get some influence over c2 now what do you mean by influence influence is as in the opportunity of being hurt you know so there is a separate slide there is a separate accounting policy there is a separate examples for each one of those but just you know kind of lay the context here in case of associate the investor is able to get an opportunity of being heard in a board meeting i mean obviously i mean even by buying one share i can get access to the shareholders meeting which is called as the annual general meeting and in that case you know obviously you know my voice will be heard but obviously you know that is not the point that we're driving home you are talking about running a company so we are talking about having an influence over the board members whether i will be able to steer the company or not so that's my case number 2 where i will have signal the board will listen to me only they will not agree to me the board will listen to me only okay the third angle here is the business combination the business combination is obviously the most desired position as far as uh, you know the investor is concerned the investor is not only being able to you know make his presence felt but he is getting complete control over this aspect so the complete control is obviously making the investee as a subsidiary and c1 turns itself into the parent and obviously the fourth case is you know not so prevalent uh, you know in 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 today's time and uh, noting that us gap and ifrs have you know therefore changed the way the accounting also is done it's called as joint venture and the joint venture is basically opening up a separate legal entity in which two people have dual control Okay, typically dual control doesn't work because you have you you can't have two pilots for a plane uh, you know actively involved into it one is a co-pilot and the other one is a main pilot but you can't have both the people you know putting the accelerator together so so so, so that's where you know joint venture comes into picture the percentage it doesn't matter so you have a shared control you know a little, little you know disruptive in that sense and therefore accounting is also you know pretty much done as per rule 2 so i'm going to talk about each one of them in detail so what you have to you know really really pay attention is the three slides here three points here so generally the percentage ownership is used to determine the category of intercorporate investment so what this basically saying is however the percentage of ownership merely provides a guideline merely provides a guideline so this is the form part of it the category the accounting will depend on this blue row it it will not depend on the percentages which method of accounting to be followed is to be determined by how much control or influence the involvement investor company is able to have that is the deciding factor as far as the uh, you know the, the the accounting method is concerned okay let me let me take a couple of examples you know practical scenarios here uh, you know what i mean by substance over form now if the holding percentage is more than 50 so this percentage tells me that i should follow the control you know i must be having control and therefore i should follow the method which is applicable which is full consolidation okay however the control in practical scenario in, you know, the, the, in that particular case there is no control due to barriers like bankruptcy government interventions etc so in substance i am not being able to exercise any control therefore i will not follow full consolidation method in spite of the fact that 50% of my you know uh, the uh, ownership belongs to me that's where substance over form comes into picture so this 50% is a mere legal form is mere guideline the actual uh, you know accounting method is followed by the substance I and mean, what hap what is happening on the ground 
let's look at the second example here if the holding is between 20 to 50 so you know this tells me that maybe I'll be falling into category 2 you know I, I must be you know it just gives me a guideline that maybe I am having a significant influence and therefore you know we follow something called as an equity method here but if you if you if you, if you find out that the investor is not able to exercise any influence then I will not follow equity method in spite of the fact that my percentage is 20 to 50 okay the third point is pretty similar that you know the percentage holding is less than 20 you know so therefore that tells me that I must be treating it as a financial asset without getting any control whatsoever but it is quite possible that I may be one of the large shareholders and therefore I must be getting a board representation and therefore there is an influence that I can exert in which case even with less than 20 percent I am allowed to follow equity method okay so that's you know the substance over form that you have to kind of understand now the last thing before I close this is just to give you a small clarification of if it is 0 to anything less than 20 so I'm just writing it 19.9 I'm following into this if I am 20 inclusive up to 50 inclusive I am following into the second which is associates for anything to get me control I must be plus 50 so I'm just writing 50.1 and you know up to 100 percent and this is where percentage not matter so you know sometimes an exam question comes up in form of a case so it's an indirect question that the investor is holding 20 percent so should 20 percent be part of financial asset or should it be part of associate so 20 percent is inclusive of associate so therefore equity method will be followed so you have to be very very careful on the cutoffs okay in specifically so I hope that this small session this introductory session on the overview of intercorporate investments is clear so there's you know a lot more uh, you know uh, topical aspects a lot more examples coming up should you have any questions any query you know feel free to reach out to me at uh, anku.k at finstudyclub.com I'll be more than happy to you know uh, take up your queries thanks